Hey guys, this is Matt and Lance, and welcome back to Project Offbeat. This is the podcast that talks about people who pursued unconventional careers. And we're back on another episode of the podcast. How are you, Lance? Hey, hey Matt. Uh, I think this is our first shoot for the week. Uh, medyo bira to kasi Matt and I usually take shoots mga once or twice or thrice even in a week. <laughs> no? So I, I really appreciate the rest that we are getting, no? Um, Especially now na ang daming trabaho, right? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a great night. Uh, later on, pabiyahe pa ako uh, going to, to a place near my office. No? So yeah, um, anything for the show, Matt? The, let, let's talk about the origin about this episode. No? So just wanted to give some context to our listeners. Back in June, there was like this trending post about a publisher of the beloved Percy Jackson series uh, that they were venturing into Philippine uh, mythology. So, Lance, I, I just wanted to ask a question. No? Have you read the Percy Jackson series? Matt, I'm not an, uh, a reader, but I watched all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, sorry, uh, sorry. Usually, kasi I, I like to read mga business articles and whatnot. Pero pag mga fiction articles, ay, fiction books, no, medyo, medyo mahina ako dun, no? Wow. Masyadong corporate. Ah. <laughs> Pero it's good that we have our, ano, our, our guests today because they're going to venture us into the world of graphic illustrations and art. No? Yeah, so as you can imagine, this is like very big news for uh, not only fans of like, like graphic novels and the franchise, no? but it also showcases what Filipino comic illustrators can offer to the world to see. No? So uh, it's going to be a middle grade graphic novel it's going to be called High Summer, and it will be released by Disney Hyperion in 2024. Our guest today, Matt, no, is an award-winning author and illustrator with a collection of graphic novels for the Filipino youth. Diba? Pinoy na Pinoy, Pinay na Pinay, right? She won the Comic Cat Best Comics Award in 2017 for her Filipiniana fantasy comic Sagala, which was released as a self-public graphic novel in 2019. Her current project, Twinkle Twinkle is an official selection finalist at the first Philippine International Comics Festival. Tori, our guest today, is also the grand prize winner of the 2020 PBBY Alcala Prize for her illustrations based on Christopher Law's chapter book, Team Abangers. Uh, she's achieved all of this and she's working full-time as an IT professional, currently a senior IT manager in PNG. Our guest today is Tori Tadiar. She joins the Project Offbeat podcast to talk about the world, the career of a graphic novelist. Hi, Tori. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Lance. Hey, Matt. And yes, hey, I know hey. she's been a <laughs> Hi, Tori. And ever I hear it. <laughs> Tori, uh, how, how do they call you usually, uh, if, if, if not Tori? Or are you Victoria at work? Or I'm Tori. Uh, I'm Tori at Tori work. Naman. And, but I, I used to be Vicky in high school, but <laughs> I go by Tori <laughs> exclusively now, yes. Okay. That's wonderful. I guess before we start off the episode, I wanted to, like on the behalf of Lance and I, we wanted to greet you a very belated happy birthday. Um, Thank yeah. you. Uh, growing up, were you a big fan of like the Percy Jackson books as well? Or maybe other graphic novels? I would say I started, I was a big fan of uh, comics, manga, anime, mm -hmm. uh, Disney movies, so the, the usual media that we consume. For Percy Jackson, actually, the first, I, the introduction I had to it was the movies. So ah, my whole class, okay. my whole class, we went on, uh, I think I was in high school then, we watched the show uh, in the cinema. So parang barkada outing to the cinema, it was my first time out with friends mm. now no parents around ganon. so we watched Percy Jackson and everyone was in love with Logan Lerman so that was my start <laughs> on Percy Jackson but I was a huge Greek mythology fan from school anyway so I had books on mythology and everything so Percy Jackson was super um, I would say a really nice series that really catered to my interest during the time What's with Percy Jackson, Tori? Um, I mean, among all of you, you mentioned you're a fan of anime movies and whatnot. Why is it not to matak sa si Percy Jackson? I think yun nga, I had Logan Lerman's picture on my ID during that time. <laughs> it was in high school. So yun yung pinakatumatak, I would say. Pero Pogi. I, I, Pogi siya. Pogi Pogi siya. siya no? <laughs> to this day, I'm hoping na lumabas siya dun sa new series that's coming out. But yes, I would say it's the, the series, it's adventure at that time. I was really into in mga fiction for uh, young adults or for kids. 
So it was the perfect intro. Kasabi niya si parang Harry Potter and then you move on to Percy Jackson. Parang ganun yung right. landscape ng yeah. kids fiction during the time. I was in grade school naman when Witch came out and I didn't even have enough money to buy my own copies. So what I would do was I would read my classmates' copies when they brought them. So it was it's a huge um influence on me. Actually, some of the readers I've had when I released Sagala, that's their comment. Parang the art style is super similar oh. to the witch comics. So, it was it was a compliment. Some of them were saying, "Oh, this looks like Disney but more manga." Some were saying it it looks like witch. So, I think nagbi bleed out yung influences that I had in terms of comics. Um before we get to the career portion of this where we talk about what's it uh you know, what what's it like to be a graphic novelist? What's it like to create your own stories, etc. Um let's get back to like the big news. Your your dream come true basically. What is High Summer? Can you tell us like a short preview about it? Okay, it's still a long way off, so I can't talk that much about it. Because like, it's still in the works. Currently, I am I'm working on it after work. Um, that's how I work on comics for the past few years anyway. So basically, High Summer is um, think of it as the, the easiest way to pitch it. Although, not exactly is think of it as a Filipino version of Percy Jackson. So right. what I have here is actually it started with what if um, we had Hogwarts pero in the Philippines like it's in a tropical mm-hmm. school it's a boarding school people have adventures there's magic um, so that was the initial intent when I was thinking of the concept and then it somehow evolved into the quick blurb about it is a girl this discovers that she has magical powers during one summer and then she accidentally Uh, casts a curse on herself and her two other friends, or rather, they're not her friends; they were her bullies. Uh, so they, the curse for them to undo it, they have to basically go on adventures. And while they're doing, well, while they're trying to work on that one, they accidentally wake up uh, an ancient beast that wants to devour the sun and plunge the world into darkness. So how do they work together to undo that and save the world? That's the plot. Of the story, I can't share more. But maybe in the coming months before the release, I'll be able to give more updates. Right, I'm sold, Lance. <laughs> parang, but, parang, with, with that with that uh, synopsis, uh, Tori, parang hindi ko parin nagets. Bakit kaya high summer? Parang hmm. is that something Whoa. you can divulge to us, diba? Not Saan yet. Not yet. High so, Ay, di ba, di ba that day. one I can explain <laughs> in the future. So. Okay, okay, all right, all right. And Siguro, is this like the pitch that you gave to uh, these bidders, these publishing houses? Hmm. This one, you it's a it's a long process actually to get to the publisher. So if you right. if um, any of the listeners are following me on Twitter, in 2020, basically mm-hmm. I posted a tweet as part of this event called DV Pit. So it's Diverse Voices Pitch. So if you're not that familiar with the Twitter book um, publishing community. These events happen where the people who are writing books um, they post about what their book is about, and then there are editors, there are agents who take a look at what is available. Like if I like your pitch, I will heart it, if or I will retweet it. If I'm an editor and I want to hear back from you, I want to see the whole pitch. So that's what mm-hmm. I did. I posted my pitch under DV Pit. I said it's a graphic novel, so I posted sample pages as well, and then. I got a lot of interest from like my agents. So agents um, are basically people who will represent you to these publishing houses internationally. So agents will like your post if they want to repre- They will offer you representation if they think um, the pitch is a good match. So I luckily had a lot, a lot of agents like my post. I think it it mm. went viral because there were a lot of people who retweeted it. I think they liked the premise. Um, and then my agent sent me an email. Um, we talked a lot. We talked a bit. And then w- were we a good match for each other? What's her vision? Where does she want to pitch the the high summer as a story? So that's how I signed with Brit. Brit Cease is my agent. Um, and then what Brit and I did, we worked on the pitch. How do you package it in a way that publishers will want to buy the book? Um, will want to publish the book? And then um, so she after that we. Basically submitted to the publishers who's interested, and luckily Disney Hyperion was one of the interested publishing houses. 
So they right. gave an offer, we accepted, and then that's how we ended up here. Yeah, so I, I guess a quick question on Disney Hyperion. Like for people who are not aware of like I guess this publishing house in particular, why was it such a big deal to be published by them? Uh are there any examples of graphic novels that they've published in the past before? Um yeah, can you give more insight on that one? Yeah, I think the the basis reason that I have is that it's Disney. So I grew up, uh, the very reason why I'm into creating stories uh, and my biggest dream as a kid was I wanted to be an animator at Disney. I think a lot mm. of, uh, if you talk to friends who do art, that's a huge like North Star for a lot of people growing up. So for me, I watched all the movies, I had copies of the, the book versions of these stories, and I watched in, I recall in Disney Channel growing up, there was this segment where they show you what the animators do, what the what their offices yes, looked yeah. like, and it was yeah. a dream come true, like they would play in the office, they decorated their office like it's a toy house, uh, and they basically drew for a living. So at that time, I was I enjoyed drawing. But I didn't know that could be someone's job. So I think for a lot of years, even until college, I was hanging on to that dream. I want to be an animator at Disney. Um, and then life happened. And then I, I decided, like, uh, I don't see anyone really graduating from the Philippines and then becoming an animator at Disney. I tried looking up how much does it cost to study in a school, an art school in the US that eventually will find its way to Disney or Pixar. And it costs... At that time, it cost around six million just to study wow. art, and yeah. that wasn't that wasn't achievable for me during the time. Um, so I said, "Okay, goodbye, dream. I'll I'll <laughs> go into a course for management. I'll take up IT, and then I graduated, find a job. So the the usual life path, the corporate life path." And then I still came back to drawing. And when I had this chance, so I, ha I published, as you mentioned in the intro, a few books by myself and from local publishers. And then when I tried out for international, it came back. Like I got offers from other publishers, but th it was Disney. So the name Disney itself, like this is my way right. of achieving that childhood dream. So I went ahead. And then yeah. I think it was also a good match because um, Disney Hyperion is actually the publisher of Percy Jackson. So it's right. coming back to my Logan Lerman Logan. attached <laughs> to my Logan. ID days. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I went with them. I think they they would be the perfect publisher for the story. Uh, Tori, could you tell us, Parang, you, you mentioned you, you went into the corporate track, right? You took a management course. And yet, you were still able to um, continue your art, no? Parang through the years, you, you told me you published books. How did you do that? Diba? There's a lot of artists <laughs> nowadays na parang, diba? pag na, na, natikman na yung college or natikman na yung corporate life, parang nahihirapan na to pick up that brush or to pick up that pen. No? Um, how did you preserve it um, through the years? I would say, uh, it, because I, I like doing it. After work, for example, what I usually do is mag-drawing lang ako for myself. Nice. Or even pag kunwari may mga training. Parang pa, eh, cause I listen better to things that are happening if I'm doodling. So I think never namang nawala sa akin that I like drawing. I think the big help for me was I found the community. So I attended because before, gumagawa ako ng comics nung high school. Eh, pero wasn't good. Nobody understood what was happening. Comics is an <laughs> art. You really need to know how to panel it. But at that time, yeah. I was like, it just needs to look pretty. Uh, so high school, super bad. And then in 2016, there was this opportunity to join um, like a comic book creators workshop. So parang sabi ko, what's there to lose? I can just join. Tapos parang at the end, they will give you a table at Comicet, which is one of the comic, local comic conventions. It's off, it's off the bucket list. I've done it. So I ended up going to that workshop and then I realized that I really enjoyed telling stories. So um, the story that I said na it's going to be 30 pages, I'll print it once, turned to be turned to be like a four chapter, 170 plus page, uh, self-published graphic novel. So it became a real book. And then people wow. actually liked it. So I sold out on the nice. first day. I had to reprint and then people People kept asking me, "What's where's the sequel? When's it coming out?" So I had to continue making it. I enjoyed working on it. To your point, um, I was actually so for work. I have to go on business trips. 
It's like I had to go to China for a hotel and then I bring out my laptop, my tablet, and I start drawing. And on the flight, that's when I draw. On, let's say, on weekends, on holidays, that's when I find the time to draw. So it's, I would say it's a lot of sacrifice. So I can't, I like, like I can't catch up on all the series, all the games that I want to play. Uh, because the free time that I have, I have to start working on the comic for me to actually finish something. And it's not like I sit down for two hours, the comic's done. It's like you sit down for two hours, that's one page. So it takes a long time. But at the end of the day, it's it's what I love doing. So I just go ahead and do it. So I just need to find the time. I naman ako corporate that I do it 24 hours a day. So... That's what I use my spare time for. Oh, wow, well, that's a rare comment from a PNG era. Lahat ng PNG <laughs> nakakilala ko eh. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. sinabi ko 24 hours eh. Kasi <laughs> the 12 hours is easy. 12 hours is ano eh. Sorry, sorry, you mentioned earlier kanina, di ba? When you were on a plane, you draw, you have to start, right? You a lot so many time. Um, for, for our audience that doesn't know parang ano yung gano ka hirap or gano ka intricate yung details of being a graphic uh, artist like yourself no um how long is the process diba um are, if if for example you're great at drawing do you just like draw draw it and and put it to life is there any other steps mm. or a, a, any you know research between it na, that you do uh while you're describing the process can you um, especially for non artists out there like is there like any step by step thing to creating that panel to creating that page no yeah yep so for this one i would say it- I worked on I work on two things. Uh, that's why it's I think in when you contacted me, it was to talk about life as an author illustrator. So the quick one, quicker one, although not less uh, not less difficult, is illustrating for picture books. So for me again, because I'm more on for the for kids for youth, yung mga ginagawa kong mga works. So for example, if you're illustrating for a picture book, it's around let's say 20, 30 illustrations that you do, na describing what's happening in the scene. So that one's a bit quicker because you read the story that was given to you and then you decide to il- how you're going to illustrate it. What are the key scenes you want to illustrate? And then you go for it. Like you create a sketch, you show it to the author, the author approves, and then you finish the work, you color everything. Um, so that's the first part on picture illustrating for picture books. The second part is on comics, which is a longer one. And because I'm a one-man team, so yung iba kasi merong... Uh, there, they have an author and there's an artist, so they work together. The author creates the story, writes the script, and then the artist interprets that script in panels. And then, with the art style, is up to them. For me, as uh, as an author illustrator, what happens is I first come up with a story. So, for example, create an outline of what I want that story to be. What's the what's the start? What's the middle? What's the end? If I want to put a twist. Um, so it requires you to understand how to create stories. And then after I create that script with and the name mga dialogue, like what's happening in this page, I do something called thumbnails. So thumbnails in comics, it's they call it thumbnails because you're supposed to do it really small so that you just know how to block off. Like, or am I, uh, do I have enough panels on this page? What's a close-up shot versus what's um, an establishing shot, mm. which is uh, like all the background, all the details. Uh, how will you flow the story? So thumbnails, uh, that is the next step. Like if you get the outline, how many, let's say so, the, the scene is someone runs, they, are, they find something and then they talk. Will you fit that in one page or do you need bigger panels para yun yung focus of that page? So that all happens in the thumbnail stage. It's basically stick figure drawing with all the squares and it's very... Mm-hmm illegible i can show you but i don't think my, my internet can take uh, sharing my screen it's basically just a lot of squares a lot of stick figures and then all the pages you have <laughs> to have that laid out so once you have the thumbnails you then move on to something called pencils pencils is when you pl- basically put out all the details like a name what will the eye what will the face look like what are mm-hmm. the details that you will put like if there are books how many books are you going to put on the scene and then that's if once you're done with pencils, it looks almost finished, but it's going to be very rough. So there's going to be lines there that you would want to clean up. And that comes into the inks phase. So inks, that's when you put in the clean lines. So the final lines that you will be printing. Dame, no? And 
Yeah, damn it. Madame, that's you'll have to do this one pass each time. Some people can do it like one page. They will do thumbnails, pencils, inks, colors <laughs> in one sit in one go. Yeah. Pero wow. the danger to that is that it will it might look different from the last yeah. page. Like page yeah. one will look different from, from page 170. So what yeah. I'm doing right now, specifically for high summer, is I have to do 200 plus pages thumbs, 200 plus pages pencils, 200 wow. plus pages inks. After you finish with inks, you put in color. And then once you co- finish with the coloring, coloring takes a lot of time, but it's enjoyable because it's it your, ba- your brain's basically off. So you can listen to podcasts, you can listen to audiobooks. Yeah. Um, but after colors, that's when you put typesetting. So the text, putting it in speech bubbles yeah, to ensure okay. na enough mm-hmm. yung enough yung ilalagay mong text or hindi siya masyadong siksik. Right. For ilalagay mo yung mga sound effects like yung mga bam, mga boom, mga ganun. You draw those out as well. So once that's done, you have your manuscript. And then printing is a whole different thing. So I had to go through my own printing when I was self-publishing. And then you have to market it yourself. So it's a lot. It's a whole process. Like a, <laughs> one comic book can right. easily take you more than a year, even if you were working on it full time. That's crazy. So, that's crazy. Yeah. That's delayed gratification at its finest, no? Exactly. You don't know how, diba? You don't know how it will go, but you took one year <laughs> to do it anyways, right? I think that's the trust that you have uh, in your work. It, it, it made me wonder, Tori, how do people or how do artists like yourself make it so consistent? Like, when you draw up a character, paano mo nagiging, pa- paano siya nagiging pare-parehas na tura all the way to page 170 plus? Like, is there is there a technique to it? Like, I wonder, do they just reprint that or... I, that's what I always wondered. Or do you draw that from scratch, Dag? I always draw it from scratch. I know there are some comics na it looks the same, right? So it's other people, they have templates. Personally, I don't. I draw everything from scratch. It takes so long. Um, actually, that's one thing. If you if you have a copy of Sagala, it actually was created from 2016 to 2019. So I would like to think I improved during that time because the pages from chapter one look nothing like the pages from chapter four. So that's why I'm saying I want to one pass everything. So it kind of looks consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it still looks a bit different from me. I'm looking at the artwork I'm doing right now for High Summer and page what the character's face in this scene does not look exactly like the character's face in the other scene. Whether they should have enough uh, distinct features that you'll be able to tell them apart para hindi naman siya same face syndrome yung tawag namin when you're beginning as a as an artist <laughs> um but yeah what helps i think is for me what i do is i create character lineups like i have what's the character design what would this character look like front side back maybe three-fourths view wow. and then that's what i would mm-hmm. use as a reference when i'm drawing the thing parang inisip ko like i saw this documentary once of like marvel artists actually drawing their comics. So, iba yung gumagawa ng story, iba gumagawa ng drawing, iba yung gumagawa ng color, tapos iba pa yung gumagawa ng like, the black ink, uh, yeah. what not, yung parang the the features or the outline basically, you know, of the characters. So, you gave us basically a small crash course of what it means to create your graphic novel. I'm just wondering, no, like, you said that it takes a year to create, uh, it can easily take up a year to create a graphic novel Inisip ko, if you're an author, let's say, you're just working with words. O parang inisip ko, mas mabilis yung, yung, yung work nila because you just write it all down and, and people use their imagination to create it. But for you, I guess it's a different challenge altogether because you have to write down the story at first. Then you have to draw it. Has there been any instances where you were like, oh wait, the story doesn't make sense at this part. Oh, I have to redraw this whole thing. Or, oh no, I have to... <laughs> alam mo yun, yung mga oh, instances. Kasi imagine, imagine you're working for a year. Alam mo yun? Tapos you're drawing everything by hand. It takes you a lot, It gives you a lot of time to think about the story that you drew up maybe a year ago, di ba? So, ayun yeah. lang. I, I'm just wondering. I would say, usually, I think that's the blessing and the the curse of being the one, a one-man team. Kasi, for example, there's you write the story. But then over the course of one year, you find ways, you're inspired by other things that you've seen. You've, you, this scene can be done differently in this way, something like that. And that's what you draw. So for me, it's actually a good point because what I can draw during that time 
can change what the, what's happening in the story. Oh, like wow. I can update what the dialogue is. Um, wow. I can update what the next scene will be. So I can tweak as I go. I would say it's a bit more strict well, when working with an editor like what I'm doing now for High Summer and what I did with Twinkle Twinkle, um, my other graphic novel, because the editor will want to keep you here uh, and what you aligned, you can't always keep changing it. But when I was working on Sagala, so Sagala was truly just me and my sister proofreading, my friends proofreading to make sure there weren't any typos. So there, it was really what... It, it was even an adventure for me. Like, I don't know what's going to happen next. So I, I, a little known fact to my readers is uh, when I started Sagala, I intended it to stop on the first issue. But at the end, I decided, let's just put a cliffhanger. Because if, I, if nobody reads it, then I don't have to do anything. <laughs> but if people read it, then that might get them to buy the next one. Uh, so I put a cliffhanger, but I did not know what to do with the next part. So when the when people started asking for a sequel, I had to figure out what will happen next. And then I kept doing it like end of chapter two, I put a cliffhanger I don't know how to resolve. End of chapter three, I did the same thing. And eventually I came up with a more exciting story than what I would have had because I had to keep figuring out what will be the next scene to this. So I, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's helpful for the process, I would say. That, that's really interesting because as kami mga readers and, and viewers, na parang feel namin na every time may cliffhang sa dulo, meron nang parang big arc na plan yung mga authors dito eh. And here, Tori is telling us, hintayin ko muna kung may bumibil eh. Tsaka ako magsusulat ulit ng next chapter, right? I mean, that's quite a realization. No? Hindi naman pala siya like uh, set in stone na nakaplot na lahat. Tama ba? Something like that. It depends. It depends. There are writers. So there are two schools of thought in writing. There are people who like everything plotted out. Like exactly. the event that happens in chapter 56 na <laughs> foreshadow na niya yan sa chapter 2. But there are pe- other people na parang, oh, let's see how this goes. So I would say I fall in between the two. Sagala was pure. Let's figure out where this will go. For now, my work is really more, this is the story. I will make little tweaks as I come along it. Pero the start, the middle, the end, the twist that I, I want to add there is all there. So the little, I would say, little things that will excite me while I'm working on it. Para ako rin, parang reader din ako. Parang, oh, what's going to happen next? Meron pa rin naman. But it's the smaller scenes rather than the huge yeah. overall story. So uh, I guess, story you mentioned before that when you were creating comics or I guess, yeah, the, the comics before in high school, parang people didn't understand what the story was or parang it was it was kind of confusing, right? Yeah. Um, fast forward to now where you're, you're publishing a book, basically, uh, a graphic novel with Disney. I guess what can you say is the improvement from that and what are the, like, the important insights that you've gotten about telling a story because there's no point in having your art being very nice but the story is not gripping enough for the audience yeah. to read right? so like what are the important insights you've gathered along the way from high school to now i would say so for between high school and now i didn't have any formal training like i didn't go to art school so what i learned from comics it was from that comic at workshop I follow artists and then sometimes artists will often share their tips, how they do this, how they do that. And there were also online courses, uh, how would you read a graphic novel? And then I read a lot, like I became, there. I declared sometime in college that I want to collect graphic novels. And at that time, my idea for a graphic novel was just, you know, Batman, The Dark Knight Returns. So it was the Western, more adult watchmen kind of things. And then I found itong, may manga, like the huge long arcs of manga. And then I stumbled upon now I'm collecting children's children's graphic novels because that's what I'm doing. So I look through them, what, what wows me about the story. And I would say the biggest development is choosing what scene I want to illustrate to be able to tell that story and then the pacing. So for example, choosing what scene before in high school, I just want to draw pretty people. So I will just draw everyone facing forward, everyone looking beautiful. So it's just Are you face, blocking face, face, basically. Face, face. Yeah. So parang at yeah. first, when you're a beginner artist, usually people will start now you're drawing characters. So it, especially me, I grew up with Pokemon. So spuro si Ash Ketchum yun din na drawing ko, si Pikachu. And then um eventually you learn that it's not just pretty faces because you don't know what's going on. It's just heads, heads talking. And then you're trying to trying to say that 
these people went on adventure, they climbed the mountain, they found a castle. So you can't do that unless you can draw everything else. So that's what I've, I learned, um, how to set an establishing shot. What's the angle? So it's a lot like, actually, nakatulong yung the filmmaking tips. Like if mm. you would watch a movie, what will build yeah. the suspense in this scene? Should it be yeah. coming from behind? Should it be a close-up? Should nakatabing iba Grabe, dapat no? yung shot? Mm-hmm. So how would you arrange those in panels? And then the pacing-wise, pacing the biggest thing I learned is you have to make them turn the page. So, kunyari, there's going to be someone entering a cave and then a big monster will come out of the cave. Hindi pwedeng pag nasa gitna siya, nangyayari na, nandito siya sa baba nito, tapos may page pa dito sa kanan. What you will do is, at the end of the rightmost page, you will have them peeking inside and then have a reaction. And then once you turn the page, that's when you oh, reveal what were they actually seeing. So, yeah, those things, yeah. what will make the person person turn the page and how will you arrange your elements so that they will turn the page and they understand what's happening i think that's the biggest learning i had comics wise uh, and then from there what i see that other artists are doing so there are super creative ones like watchmen was all like nine panel pages or there were artists that do huge spreads all the time so what can I learn from that? How can I incorporate that into my work? So the years between high Dang. school and now, I think that's what I that was most yeah. important for me. Tor- Tori, I, I was just wondering when you were telling that no, the parang ano yung angles that would make it pe- that would make people more enticed to it and all. Where are these insights coming from? Like, is this like a human psychology thing that they 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 came up with through the years, diba? Right? I I saw in in Matt's um research here that. You're also specializing in like business intelligence. You know how how do you guys get all of these insights? You know, um, parang naisip ko talo'y it's like a uh, a user designer, the by UX designer, wherein they study humans and how they and how they you know move, the ba? Ganon din ba yung mga artists and this comic at workshops? How do they give you these insights? Na pag nakatalikod yung tao, mas gaganahan ka or something like that, the ba? I would say meron ng parang it always will work. Meron lang if you ah, try reading talaga. mga how to draw comics. Parang meron lang if you, for example, if the color suddenly turns red or if white, white, white yung scene biglang black. May emotional impact. Oh my impact. God, may ganun. <laughs> yeah, so I think there is a psychology behind it. I don't know anyone who's actually actively studying that psychology. Me personally, it's really in what I've read. So hmm. parang na osmosis na lang yun from what I, the media that I consume. And then what you what you learn from it. So hindi lang hindi lang ako usually hindi lang ako nunut na sinet niting ng ako ano ba yung angle ano ba yung parang rule of thirds dapat. Eto may ilaw, eto wala. So right, those right. kinds of things um, that you learn. But I I like that point where it's a a little bit like UX. Like how yeah. will a person coming into this page react to it? Like will they turn the page? Where will their eye go? Because that is key to comics kasi hindi pwedeng Grabe. malaki yung panel dito tapos biglang mm. gusto mo umikot sila dun sa page it has to always if you're a western reader it's left to right if Japanese it's right to left yeah. so you will have to find ways one technique that I've learned is for example the character is on the upper right side and you want the eye to go down to the center left that character needs to be looking at the center left oh, or pwedeng talaga. yung really? pwedeng yung kamay niya nakaturo sa <laughs> center left or pwedeng merong prop wow. na going to that direction. So how you lead the eye. So medyo may pagkayo ay nga siya I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh sorry, uh what is it with graphic illustrations no? What is it with mangas, you know, what is with comic books? Um na that makes it so powerful and it still exists today even with the entirety of movies, 'di ba? Ang dami ng movies, ang dami ng animated films. Pero the power of a static photo in a comic book, diba? Could you share to us what's your take on that, no? Um, ano yung dinadala na sa tao that, you know, the films and the and the Netflixes of this world can't bring? Mm, I would say what I like about comics, kasi I, I, it's so much easier to to watch something on Netflix, right? Rather than buy an ang mahal sure. ng comic books ngayon <laughs> kasi they're fully colored, they're basically all illustrated. Exactly. But mm. iba yung feeling niya. I would say it's in between a movie and a novel. Tapos the yun nga, it, it's art and story happening together in one page. But it's also the reader. 
it's also you your Im- imagination is working because you have panels it's not moving you you have to inter- yeah interpret how does this work into this else is happening on the page and what i like personally about comics is pwede pwede kang tumigil dun sa page pwede mo siyang i-absorb what's happening on the page you can look at the little details that's going on so parang you go at your own pace you can create your own background of what's happening on the page yeah. so it's a lot of involvement from the reader um, that i cannot find in movies pero it's also a bit more parang things to things that your eyes can feast on versus a novel so it's the perfect marriage for me yeah. so bias yeah. ako pero i would say that's how <laughs> i that's how i consume it yeah no i get you i get you parang it's more open to interpretation unlike kapag isang yes. episode eto na talaga eh, di ba? Straight from end, start to finish, this is how we're trying to tell the story. Galing, galing. And I think with graphic novels, the 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 fact that it's paneled already, there are gaps in the story where you have to kind of animate, for example, yes. one one scene to it to the other, eh, di ba? So like obviously in anime series, parang they animate the scene for you already, but like in the panels, you have to do it in your head. Like okay, ah, this person is going here, di ba? Ayon, yeah. well. Um, I guess uh, my next question is like definitely we've talked a lot about what it means to create a graphic novel, um, all of these insights on storytelling as well. But I guess I, I wanted to ask like where do you find the inspiration for your novels? And we all already tapped that you incorporate a lot of like Filipino history, mythology, and fashion even in your work. Like where do you where do you find the motivation to incorporate that in it? Mm. I would say at first when so when I was younger, I would basically create a copy of whatever I was watching. So for example, uh, if you're familiar with the anime Magic Knight Ray Earth, so it's about uh, get going in isekai siya, So you go into another world, you discover you have magic powers, you fight evil. So at that time, I was creating stories of my own. What if I was transported into another world? What if there were magic powers? And usually during that time, you would either watch like a Disney movie or uh, or anime. Those are the only two things. Um, and usually, for example, your your protagonist will be named something like. Ashley Ketchum. So it's very Western or it's Japanese. Like you would name this person Yamato Murakami. So it's so it's so far from what what you see every day. So what was what has been my inspiration when I started um, making comics in earnest, especially in 2016, was what is something, what is something that I can do? Like for example, um, Mulan was based on the culture of China. After watching Mulan, you knew that there was a Great Wall, there were Huns. You learned a lot from that. If you watched Aladdin, you would see what what's the difference in culture in this place, in this fictional place called Agraba. So you you experience the world through it. But I don't see as much um, in in mainstream media is the that Filipino touch. What if there was a Disney? This is how I started thinking about Sagala. What if there was a Disney film? that was based in the Philippines. Like you're wearing barot saya, you're wearing barong. So actually it started with those things, the costumes. Um, I liked looking at the designs. What if the design was fantasy? So what if the world was fantasy? What if the Spanish colonial era was fantasy? And what what I learned from Sagala is a lot of people were, especially Filipino readers, they were super into it. Like I've never seen something like this before or there were other works, but there you see them in comic at once or comic on and then it's gone because the author didn't print another set. So my inspiration for, for the things that I'm doing is what if we can bring that Filipino culture, which is super rich. Even I myself, I was into Percy Jackson, Harry Potter. So I was learning about um, let's say what is winter like in Hogwarts or what is what are the places in America where the, there could be gods hiding. Um, but what if you have that for the, Fil- for, what if I read something when I was younger that was about the Philippines that will make me learn more about what was Philippine culture, what are the folklore, uh, what are the stories that we have in the different parts of the archipelago. And that's what's and, uh, super unique about the Philippines. Like it's not just, if I tell you this one story, that's just, a Tagalog interpretation. There's a Bisaya part, there's an Ilocano part, and it's so many different stories. How can this all coexist in one 
Philippines and what can we tap into and and damaging artists. So that's right now what I want to do: tell stories about the Philippines that will get a reader to want to learn more. So maybe not just my works. Maybe look at other comic artists in the Philippines who are doing equally amazing work and learn something from that. So that's the end goal yeah. I have for now. It didn't yes. start that way. I just wanted to tell you know a Ray Earth yeah. story. <laughs> Imagine Matt watching a film, tapos nire recreate niya agad in her mind. Oh my God! <laughs> I mean, like I can't believe someone watches film like that, no, or or watches episode like that. Um, and and I think what what I'm wondering ever since the start of this episode is how do you find that time, no? De ba parang I mean we all have day jobs, right? We all have our nine to fives, or or in maybe in your case nine to sevens, right? Um, I mean, how do you like explore? Philippines, or maybe read all of these comic books, um, even with the with the day job like uh, an IT job in PNG. I would say for me, it's really purposefully making the time. Like for example, right now, the time I have yeah, to work on the comic is after work. So I have. <laughs> I, and I treat myself to it like I'm listening to an audio book that I can only listen yeah, to okay. during the time that I'm drawing. So. For example, it's usually I finish work. Let's say 6 p.m. for the day. I have dinner, have to do other chores, and then starting 9 p.m. to around 11, that's my time to draw. Weekends, I can draw a bit more. Holidays, if there's a holiday, sometimes I use my VLs to draw. So in yung ano, medyo oh sacrifice my on my end. Wow. Like I could take a vacation <laughs> somewhere, but instead I'm drawing. Oh my god! Um, but that's that's what I have to do. Um, I. I like the quote. I read it before. I think it was Mark Manson saying that what's what's the pain you want to live with? What's the struggle that you're willing to bear uh, to be able to get that life? So for me, it that's the struggle I I can deal with, and I'm choosing that I want to draw. I want to create these stories for people to read at the expense of let's say more free time, more tonganga time, more series that I can watch. So yeah, it's it's about finding those little pockets of time where I can actually do it, and then actually doing it. So I try as much as possible. Now you know I'm doing something else, para hindi naman total waste of time. Like listen to an audio book, listen to a podcast. Even yeah, sometimes I draw, and my family's there. I just talk with them while I'm drawing. So oh my god, I mean like using VLs to draw. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> grave, grave. I, I was always wondering, no, parang what motivates you guys as graphic illustrators to continue your art, no? Um, you hear about the stories where the manga industry in, in Japan is slowly deteriorating, de ba? No overworking mga manga artists, and there are not enough people taking up that art already or really learning that art already because yun nga and dami ng animated uh and and VODs, de ba? Um, in, in terms of the Philippines, no, uh, our comic illustrators like yourself, um, would you know what's the state um, of our Filipino um, illustrators um, and what motivates you to still do it um, even with all of these rumors and, and news? Yeah, personally, I think that's also the reason why I'm not a full-time comic artist right now. Like it, mm, it doesn't yeah. pay. Like you oh cannot. When I tried selling uh, my first comic book in 2016. It was to print it. It cost seventy-five pesos, and then you will sell it for one hundred. So per piece, you're earning how just twenty-five pesos per piece, and then you sell one hundred copies maximum. That's just how much, Oof. right? Um, two five put into it no. of over months. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a, it's small earnings. Um. Although right now, I would say for me personally, it's really about telling that story that I want to tell. Like even if this doesn't pay, even if I couldn't sell it, I will still make these stories. I want to tell these stories. I, it's, it's my hobby. Um. It's, I would do it even without. I wasn't. I didn't come into comics saying this is going to be my career. I'm going to. I don't have for financial projections. <laughs> I just was really doing it for fun. And because I was passionate about, I want to put put this out there. Um, for other artists, I would say there it's not impossible. Contrary to what I said earlier, that it it doesn't pay. There are artists who earn enough money to make a living or even a comfortable living doing comics. Ang um, uh, example that comes to mind for local is si Manix Abrera. And all his books. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if full time siya pero si Tarantadong Kalbo. If you're familiar, so yeah. he's also releasing books that a lot of people are buying. 
So I would say it's looking up before a few years back talagang it's just artists na nagse-sell. The only payday that you will get is if you go to a comic convention. Then the the pandemic came, conventions were nowhere to be found. Suddenly yeah, they... people started creating comics online. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this in your research, but there's this website called PenLab. So hmm. PenLab is basically people upload they yep, contact yep. contacted us individually or you could submit to them and then they will upload your work. So it's all Filipino comics, super great selection going on there. Um, and then what I'm seeing right now is like Comicet. Comicet is getting pitches, publishing. So it takes the pain out of when I was going through the process. I told you I will still need to print. I market everything. So Comicet finds stories like Twinkle Twinkle, my story. They will print everything. They will take care of distribution. They will even submit it for awards and everything. And then you get royalties. So may onting onting money coming out of it. And then what I'm hearing right now is that Pen Lab has partnered with Kumu. And then yeah. they're actually paying artists to release. So it's sim- similar to the webtoon example, where you get a salary as long as you produce this much, let's say one chapter in a month. Um, so it's it's looking up. It's very promising actually. So um, ang daming magandang Filipino comics at the moment, and they're finding the right support. Like there's a lot of interest. Um, before we were just a small niche community in comic conventions. This, it's the same people buying your work. The money you earn is the money you use to buy other people's comics. So umi ikot lang yung pera. But now it's spreading. A lot of people are very interested. Um, so it's looking. It's not yet there. It's not a full career that everyone, as long as you're an artist, you can get into. It's still a matter of luck at the moment. But at least it's getting better. And I'm really hoping. More will come out of the current interest that I'm seeing. Yeah, happy to know that the industry somewhat may konting ilaw na, no? May konting yes. spark na, uh, at the very least. You know, Lance, what I've been noticing from Tori is that she's so well informed about what's going on in her industry, what's how how you create like these graphic stories these novels and everything and to top it all off she's still she she's working a corporate <laughs> it job ba in one of Bro, the business uh, intelligence ba naman pag business <laughs> intelligence alam niya talaga yan <laughs> grabe well i mean tori i guess i have one last question for you in this i guess this career portion of it all no um after so many years of like uh working your it job then drawing uh in your spare time then joining these comic conventions going through like the hardships of being a self-published graphic novelist and now it's led you to this point now you have this amazing book deal with disney how does it feel um to have your lifelong dream come true uh when i talked to your sister i say to reach out to you she said yes this is her lifelong dream etc <laughs> so how does it feel i guess the sobrang worth it ba siya? I would say I did not expect it to come now. I was expecting to slog on this like few more years, maybe decades, and then get my get what I deserve at the end of let's say 20 years. So I was really really fortunate. So I would say it I didn't expect it until now medyo hindi pa rin ako makapaniwala na it will be published. And I'm telling myself until it's on the shelf in fully booked in national bookstore, it's not I haven't <laughs> made it yet. So I'm still working on it. I don't know. It's delayed. Sobrang delayed siya. Like when I told, when it got announced in June and it went trending, I didn't expect that. I didn't have enough time because I was working to respond to everyone who was saying congratulations or who was sharing it on where. I just saw that and dami kong notifications and I couldn't, I didn't have the time to keep up with it. Um, pero that 2022, June 2022 announcement started October, July, July 2020. So it was a long wait um, in between. So right now, it still feels like that. Like the, it's not yet out. I can't share about it that much yet. When it comes out in 2024, maybe that's when I can say I've reached the dream. Um, but all in all, I'm super thankful. And I want really want to pay it forward. So it's not just I got this opportunity. How can I, um, how can I use that? I would say it, I would call it a rising tide because it's an international publisher finally looking at a Filipino um, IP Filipino content, maybe they'll be interested in a lot more. So what I'm doing right now, for example, is I'm assembling the team to help me work on it because again, I will die if I if I try to finish <laughs> this book by myself. 
Um, so I, I wanted to be a Filipino artist that helps me out, like who will do the color, who will do the letters, who will do the assistant work. So, and then eventually I want to be able to push them. Maybe they can get their own book deals or they forge their own comics career. And at the same time, I just really like seeing the work that's coming, the new work that's coming out. Um, and how I can support it, like talk about talk about the works on Pen Lab, talk about talk about the works on Comicet, and then maybe in the future, let's say have sponsor more people to join that workshop, right? The, the one that got me started. So how can I get more people into that if they really have the passion for it? Oh, dami kong kakilala, Tori, that would die to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> Tori, let us know. Huh? Let us know later. Um, how do we uh, apply to your team? Uh, most definitely. <laughs> so, ang dami kong kakilala, promise, na uh, wants to aspire to be someone like you and what's the best step done to, you know, work with you. Diba? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we're looking forward to 2024. We'll bring you on again as a guest para you can promote <laughs> the <laughs> comics a little. <laughs> well, uh, uh, na sa Disney office ka na nun, na. Ayun, okay. Oh, okay. Disney let's office see, let's see. Uh, well, um, I guess let's get back into like paying it forward. Like our project of beat podcast is for uh, is catered for uh, corporate professionals that want to pursue. Uh, different passions or want to learn about different careers like I guess if anyone out there wants to like try out this graphic art or uh, become an artist or whatnot is there any uh, tips you can uh, share to get them started no? yeah this one I, I I mentioned that I talked to students about this and it, this is usually the tips that I give it's three things number one is to practice a lot because people don't become artists overnight I talked about drawing Pokemon um, when it when, yeah. when it came out so I was six years <laughs> old then I was already starting drawing then um, my aunt gave me uh, um, how to draw manga books they were all the rage in grade school yeah, yeah. like what how to panel the comics so I was drawing for the past 20 plus years already and I'm not the best artist like I didn't get enough time to be as good as the other artists out there what I do know I can do is I can tell a story um, but the, to get to even this level, to the level that I'm drawing, it's it took a lot of time, took a lot of practice. And it's not just draw the same thing every day. It's look around you. What can you see? How do you then, how will you draw that? How will what it's observation? It's taking it all in and then being able to translate it. And then you know, if you have the opportunity to go to let's say an art school uh, or to learn from online courses, or it maybe even if you're if art is not your forte if you're a writer like you need to attend those kinds of things what makes a good story what is save the cat what is what are the usual um conflicts that you can put in a story how would you develop that so it's really about practice keep on doing it keep on if you want to be an artist get a tablet um or draw on paper whatever you have don't make it an excuse na ah, wala akong ipad with procreate uh, whatever you have because I started with I started with pencil and tracing paper tapos isa scan ko sa scanner tapos oh, wow. mga, ano, mga free free art free ano lang siya free software I was using my mouse to color everything until oh, I finally God. bought a tablet and it was the only tablet I had for 15 years it was the cheapest oh, one available wow. so number one is practice a lot of practice number two is to find that uh, find friends that same, share the same interest or find a community so for me Yun nga, growing up it was well medyo geeky siya to be drawing like it wasn't the cool thing to do like kids would bully you for <laughs> for playing video games when I was younger um, so for me it, I found friends online so medyo, ano siya, medyo very lonely teenager behavior but I found friends online who were like um, looking back like what is this art that I posted online but people were commenting like wow I really like how you colored the hair so it's yeah. finding those friends that are, share the same interest and will build you up. And then a community. So in what I shared, Comicat was the one that started me off. So after I got into uh, the workshop, I met people from the workshop who are still my friends now. And when I see them at conventions, like, hey, what, what's, what are you doing on? What are we working on now? And then you, that's where you network. 
So incorporate you do a lot of networking, but here you also can and and the networking is fun. Yeah. Like you hang out during cons, you talk about the same video games that you play, the same books that you read. But at the same time, they will also connect you. Like oh, he's a publisher for this. Oh, this person um, yeah. knows how to get into. So actually, the publishing internationally, I met a couple of uh, people in Comicet. So see, si, uh, Danny Chotico and Richard Mercado, who went on and studied comics in the U.S. So they were actually the ones who told me now. Oh, there's this event that where you can pitch. So if I didn't meet them in Comicet, I wouldn't have posted in Twitter during that event and wouldn't have found my agent, wouldn't have gotten the book deal. So find friends, find that community that you will belong to. Yeah. Comicet is a good one. Just go online on Twitter. Avoid the toxic posts, but there are a lot of friendly <laughs> people. And then the last last one, it's um, it's better done than perfect. So if you see my work in 2016, that was uh, printed for 75 pesos, sold for 100. It's bad. It's for me, for me now, looking back, it's it looks bad. Like what did, <laughs> I, did was I rushing? <laughs> Didn't I know how to draw a hand? So there were a lot of shortcuts that I made. Pero if I didn't release it in 2016, I wouldn't have released the 2017, 2018, 2019. I wouldn't have ended up here. Yeah. So in comics, yeah. I would say you will always look at it and think it's so bad because you're not, you don't have enough time. An illustration, if you want it fully colored, will take you easily eight to ten hours. Um, but in comics, you don't have the luxury of every panel will take eight to ten hours. Exactly. You need to finish it. You need to exactly. yeah. sacrifice some things. So actually, my art style that is sobrang detailed. Ko lahat ng pieces ng hair individually nakashade pa yon. Now it's just get the shapes down, get the emotion down, and that's it. That you're finished with that panel. Move on to the next. So learning to Just publish it, ship it once it's done, yeah. um, and then getting the feedback because that feedback will help you improve. And yeah. it's also you have something like you're part of the club. Parang oh, this is my comic. Yeah. You can share about it. So Ganda. find a way to get it done. Motivate yourself to just crawl to the finish line, whatever you have submitted, um, versus trying to get it perfect and never getting to that yeah. finish line. So. The no, last, the last point, mo Tori. Lumabas yung pagka IT mo, no? I know in in I in the IT world, there's this concept na agile mentality, right? Yes. You know, even if hindi siya perfect, just get it out there, right? And get feedback from others and exactly. just iterate, right? So it's such a a ganda how how I, I'm not sure if you even notice it, no? But the fusion of your career in IT and your being a graphic illustrator is now showing through your answers, and I think it's such a rare combination. But you know, you're such a creative and different, rare, rare kind of uh, person as well. Um, Tori, I think my my question though, um, you talked about you know all of these uh, uh, parang the opportunities that you got along in these comic cons, no? Um, could you tell us, naman, no, para sa mga audience namin um, who's aspiring to be like you, no? What are the misconceptions, naman, no? What are the the myths out there na they have to be a little bit wary of or a little bit cautious of before, mm-hmm. you know, going all in like you did um, in this industry? Yep, I would say this one, it's it's always, um, for example, when you go to, as an artist, from an artist's point of view, when you go to Comic Cat um, or a, a convention or even online, people will message you saying, I have a story, can you draw it? I think the common misconception is mm. it's it's fast to draw, and I I've been talking about it this whole um this whole shoot, but it does not, <laughs> and you know it by now. Pero it's always a misconception. They think it's very quick. They think that the work of the author once they're done, it's fifty fifty. I'm done with this. I finished it in two weeks. You should be able to finish it in two weeks as well. Uh, so yun yeah it really takes years. Like if you go to a comic convention, you re- you get one book, and this one. At this one, I hate it when it happens. Someone goes to my table, reads the thing, and then leaves. Doesn't buy anything. Like super. Why did you do that? As in, they would even comment about the story while reading it in front of me. Uh, because that one, oh, that man. thing that took you 10 minutes to read, actually took me like six months Pete. for me to be able to finish it to get it to this state. So it's. It's a, a really long process. That was a thing that I described, and it doesn't get easier. Like I, this is my third third graphic novel already, and it really gets to the part where 
since sabi natin, sometimes I wake early to get some drawing done. 5 a.m., gusto mo na lang itapon yung laptop mo. Like, what is this all for? Nobody's <laughs> giving me feedback anyway. Who's going to be reading this? So it comes to that point na medyo mag, ano, ka, mag-breakdown ka because of how difficult it is. It's really a marathon. It's not like sprint done, sprint done, no. It's you, you run with it. You don't know if malayo pa ba, matagal pa ba to, how much more of this. But you just need to consistently show up and just do it and then after a year then you, you finally have it so that's a common misconception that it's quick um or that it's parang it's it's always drawing you're enjoying it anyway so it's not work it's work so yeah. to those saying that it's just their hobby so they shouldn't be paid for it um i isang misconception na parang you should be paid if you're a comic artist and you're not doing it for yourself you should be paid what you're worth It takes, for example, if in a corporate job you will earn this much money for far, four hours of work, then it should be the same rate that you're doing for comics because that's a different kind of work yeah. but still work. Yeah. So there, I think that that's the misconception I always, always nags at me, especially when, for example, newer artists they will say, "No, oh, I'll just draw it for free." Parang no, don't don't do that for free. Uh, you yeah. work to get to that level of skill should at least be yeah. compensated. Pati sa mga digital artists, ganyan din eh. Parang, or librang yeah, logo, yung, ano, gawa or exposure. Logo, or, oh my ano, God, exposure. Oh, mo. tama, tama. Kill yourself, no? Anong, anong <laughs> libre? Anong, anong exposure, right? In the vibe of paying it forward, can you like, uh, is there any comic creator uh, you want to shout out, no? Um, anyone you follow or support? I would say there's a lot of them, so I follow a lot of them. Pero I would say to the readers who are interested in getting into Filipino comics, because again, madam, sobrang daming maganda. Anything you would like to read about, like um, all almost all genres are out there. Um, you can look at Pen Lab. Pen Lab. I forgot the URL itself, but you can look up Pen Lab Filipino comics. They should be the first one out, and then just find the what do you like best there are a lot in the top there are, there are also hidden gems whenever i was i'm just randomly browsing and then comic at um so i, I owe comic at a lot so i, I will plug them <laughs> so comic at uh, it really release as part of pickoff um every year they they release around 10 books a lot of them are full color as in ang ganda ng quality ng pagka print and they're super amazing stories super varied there are comics about um family oriented ones versus ones na medyo adult yung themes niya mine falls under medyo for youth um kinds of stories so it's a, a lot of comics support them like the next comic that i think is coming out in october like go there look at what comics are available don't just buy fan art stickers you can look at the original comics as well and then yun nga the good place the good free place to start is pen lab So just read there and then show support to those artists. And I guess this goes without saying, you know, but for our, uh, for our listeners who maybe want to go into it, just visit a comic, right? Diba? To get inspired, yeah. to actually be immersed in that world and kind of like, Uy, come out of it saying, Uy, maybe I want to try it, maybe I don't want to try it. You know, uh, I think it's worth the experience of supporting other artists as well. So yeah, actually, Tori, thank you so much for taking us off the beaten path, I honestly feel like this was such a great conversation and parang short course na siya on how to create your graphic <laughs> novel. Tori, uh, can you let people know where you are now and uh, what you're excited about? So right now, as you would expect, I'm excited about 2024 uh, when High Summer will finally be published. Let's see when. They, I don't have a final date yet, but we can expect it in 2024. For updates, I do post sometimes like the concept art, like what will the characters look like. You can look at my Twitter. It's um, HaiTori, H-A-I-T-O-R-I. Um, or I think I, my Instagram got deleted. So... It's high story art on really? Instagram, but but nothing's there yet. Fortunately, yes, I lost I lost my Instagram account for some reason, um, or my website www.hightory.com. H A I T O R I. Um, I post random updates, and most of my time is spent either working or working on the comic book. So when I do find time, I post something. Um, so that's it. And then I think last thing to plug is um, my book twinkle twinkle that came out in 2021 it's still out so it's in the it's in shopee it's in lazada under comic or you can also see it whenever there's a 
a geeky sounding convention, usually it's there. It actually just <laughs> won an award. It's it won um, Reader's Choice for wow. the National Children's Book Awards a few days ago. So I didn't even know that it, was, it was part of the running. So the good thing about it is it's Reader's Choice Awards. There are other amazing books on the lineup, but this one basically tells me there are kids really reading this book. So that's the dream. That's the dream, no? Cuts through all ages, right? I mean, yeah. that's the dream. Congratulations. You're inspiring the next story, Tadiar, right? I hope so. <laughs> that is my dream. If someone comes up to me and says, I started because I saw that you came from the bottom with 2016 <laughs> artwork and then suddenly you're here. Oh so. my God. <laughs> so um, I guess just to close off this Project Offbeat episode, we ask this question all the time to all of our guests, no? Um, for you, in your own words, no, what is taking the off-beaten path? For me, I say I'm not exactly. I'm still. I'm. Lo- I'm walking one foot on the beaten path, one foot <laughs> off of it. And I would say, well, I would just love to focus on one thing. Like maybe I can go full on corpo, just ito lang, and then rest when I have the my v- use my VLs for actual rest, <laughs> or I can just do art. Like whenever I have my own schedule, draw when I can finish books in a year versus two years. Um, I still get fulfillment from both. So what surprised me actually is I love IT. Um, I love working uh, with my team. Uh, I love being in this setting. I learn a lot from it that I can translate to Lance's point earlier to what I do in art and also what the, the connections that I make in art or the way I think I can also apply that to my job. And it's really good. Kung meron lang 28 hours a day, I think kasha na. I think that's the perfect balance. <laughs> but I would not give up I would not give up one or the other. Uh, because it's it's re- both sides make up what motivates me for the other. Like if total po- full drawing lang ako, baka burn out naman ako doon, magalit yeah. na ako sa pag art. If total yeah. corporate lang ako, parang hindi ko na na pursue yung passion ko. So it's yep. about maintaining balance for me. PNG, sana nakikinig ka ngayon. At least give Tori two, two more hours of her day. <laughs> I mean, no, no, so it, she can... Hindi naman, hindi naman nila force eh. It's my choice. So, you know, yun yung pitfall of this one. I, I choose to give them my two hours. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, man. All right. I just want to, like, thank you, no, for, for... Because usually in Offbeat, the guests that we invite in, they they're one hundred percent focused on their on their off beaten path. So it's not usually na we have like this corporate person that pursues their off beaten path, but are still in corpo. So thank you for kind of like opening our eyes and saying, hey, you can pursue you can both at once, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. So thank you again, Tori, for joining us uh, on the project off beat. Thank you guys for listening to the show. If you liked our show, follow us on Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, and YouTube for exclusive content that's at the Project Offbeat. See you in the next episode and here's to taking the hashtag off the beaten path. Thank you again, Tori. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for listening.